Hey guys, and welcome to my new tech channel. Today, we're gonna to review the Soundbeats True Engine 3 SEs. These are known to be at a great budget, and they offer quite a lot in that budget. That's why we're gonna check out how the sound quality is, what the latency's like, we're gonna do a mic test, we're gonna examine the look and feel, and a bunch of other stuff. So definitely watch this till the end. So without further ado, let's check out the Soundbeats True Engine 3 SEs. Okay, so the first thing we should do is unbox it. And when we open the box, we're greeted by these two papers. Then there's the case, the earbuds themselves, the USB-C cable, these comply foam tips. You also get two spare tips, one small and one large, and the medium ones come fitted on it. The comply instruction card, a customer care card, and the manual for the earbuds themselves. As for the price, these average around $50 US, but it does depend on where you get them from, whether it's Amazon or some other website or physical store. So you have to search around, you might get a better deal. As for the look and feel, they feel and look pretty premium, although they're not, they're relatively budget models. The case itself has a rubbery texture to it, which I like, but the lid is very thin. And these look very similar to the almost double priced H1s by Soundpete. Also, the case has a battery indicator, which I really like and it has a USB-C port at the back. When we look at the earbuds themselves, these also look very close to the double-priced H1s, and they also have a bit of a premium feel to them because they have this rubbery texture around it, which I really like. This is not just aesthetics or looks. This rubbery feel is actually really solid when you grab them. They don't let your hand slip, so it's really easy to take it out of the case, which is not the case in a lot of other earbuds. As for the fit of the earbuds themselves, these aren't small by any means. In fact, they're rather on the larger side. But when you put them in your ear, the fit is pretty good. It's not bad at all. I don't feel like these are gonna fall out, which is always great. And they don't even feel too heavy. I like the fit. Plus, if you have a problem with the fit, you can always change the earbuds tips with either the larger ones or the smaller ones or the comply tips that come along with it, which are supposed to be more comfortable and also give better noise isolation. And some people say apparently that they also change the sound signature a bit. So that's something interesting and worth noting. They don't fit too bad, but I'm not gonna say that the best fit either because there are many earbuds I've tried that have a slightly better fit. So these are just above average when it comes to the fit. I'd give it about a six and a half to seven out of 10 for fit alone. These earbuds come with a Qualcomm chip, and the ones that I have have the 3020 chip. Although there's a new version out of these which has a 3040 chip, which is slightly better. And if it's at the same price, it's a no-brainer to go for those, because that'll be a little better in a lot of stuff. But these do have the Qualcomm chip, which matters, and because of that, it has Bluetooth 5.0 and Aptex codec, which is really important and a great feature, especially in this budget. As for the battery, these earbuds give you six to six and a half hours of playback time. And with the case, you get 30 hours in total, which is pretty solid. It's quite a reasonable amount of time. And also the earbuds charge in one and a half hour and the case charges from zero to full in two hours. One thing to note is this doesn't have wireless charging, but at this price, who's complaining? As for the water resistant rating, these are rated at IPX5, which is great. I think every earbud needs to be waterproof to some extent because you never know when you're gonna sweat or when it's suddenly gonna start raining. Having said that, let's make sure these are waterproof by testing them. Okay, great, so these pass a waterproofing test. You can use these in the rain and even if you sweat without any problems. Okay, now let's talk about the mic. The first thing we need to do is do a mic test. This is a sound test of the mic for the Soundpeach True Engine 3 SE. Right now I'm in a relatively quiet room. How is my voice sounding? Now I'm gonna put on a crowd simulation. So this is the sound test of the mic for the True Engine 3 SE with a sound simulation playing at the back. How is my voice sounding now? Do let me know in the comments below. Okay, so we heard the mic test. To be honest, I think they're pretty all right. They're not bad, they're average, maybe slightly above average, especially when you take sound peats into consideration because sound peats aren't really known for their mic quality, to be honest. I've checked out a lot of sound peat earbuds and their mics are never too impressive. So these get a good score, especially relative to that. Um, I don't think you'll have a problem using the mics. Now let's check out the latency of these. So let's first do a test.
Okay, so in latency, these are generally pretty good if you notice. I don't think you have any problem watching videos or doing anything in the visual mediums with these earbuds. If you're gaming, you know that earbuds aren't the best devices to use for gaming. But having said that, generally compared to other earbuds, these should be fine even for gaming and shouldn't be too high in latency. One thing to note is these don't have a gaming mode and their big brothers, the H1s do, but that's almost double the price. So overall, I would say in this price point, these get a big thumbs up for me in latency. Guys, if you like this video so far, definitely hit a like and subscribe and also join my Facebook group where you can interact with me. The link is in the description. As for the sound quality, these come with dual dynamic drivers and the Qualcomm chip, as I mentioned. So I was expecting pretty good sound quality. And when I tested them out, they were pretty good, especially for the price. I would say the low ends were punchy, albeit I was expecting a little more punch because of the dual dynamic drivers, but these were good enough. Also, the mids and troubles were above average. The clarity was pretty good, the sound stage was wide enough and the instrument separation was reasonable. Overall, in sound quality, I would say these are pretty good, especially for the price. These don't compare too well with the really premium ones, but these are good enough. As for noise cancelling, these don't have active noise cancelling, but they do have good passive noise cancelling. They block out external sounds quite well, actually, and I don't think you'll even miss ANC that much. That's not a promise, but personally, I thought they were pretty good. As for the functions, one tap on the right earbud increases the volume and one tap on the left earbud decreases the volume. A double tap, whether it's right or left, pauses and plays or receives a call or ends it. A triple tap on any of the earbuds will bring up Assistant or Siri or whatever assistant you have on your phone. And a long press on the right earbud will skip forward and a long press on the left earbud will skip back. As for any issues, I did phase one. The connectivity of these earbuds is sometimes a little erratic. Sometimes when you put them in your ear, they don't connect themselves and you have to go and connect it. Although that's not the case all the time. It happened once or twice. I have a friend who also had these as well and he had a bad experience when it comes to the connectivity. In fact, both of his earbuds stopped working together. They would only work one at a time. Each one had its own Bluetooth identity. So that's actually happened to me once in another Soundbeats earbud, but all I had to do was reset it and it started working. In my experience with these so far, I only had a bit of an issue of it connecting to my laptop and my phone, but to be honest, that was only 10% of the time. 90% of the time, they worked pretty well. So overall, what you get with these earbuds is a really good look and feel, great battery life, good latency, pretty all right mic, I'd say, good sound quality, definitely, and all at a really good price. So I would totally say that these are a pretty good deal if you get them at a good price, definitely. And remember, there's a new version out of these, and if you get those, especially for the same price, it's a no-brainer, go for that. The 3040 chip is better. So that's about it for this video. I hope you liked it, I hope it was useful. Definitely hit a like and subscribe so you can watch out for my next videos. Till then, take care, bye.